Welcome to H2K Infosys. H2K Infosys is a e-verify business based in Atlanta, Georgia, United States. We provide 100% job-oriented, instructor-led, face-to-face, true live online software training programs. It also includes access to Cloud Test Lab with software tools. We provide live project for you to work on. We also provide assistance with mock interviews, resume preparation and review, and job placement assistance. H2K Infosys is trusted by so many students across the world. H2K Infosys provides world-class services in IT training with real-time project work for corporates and individuals, special IT training for MS students in the United States, software design development, QA manual and automation, performance testing and maintenance, IT staff augmentation, job placement assistance and tech support. In Java also the fourth statement is executing the query. To execute the query you need to use your statement object and you need to call the method execute which will execute the query with respect to the database and provides you the actual response with respect to execute also there are three types the first one is execute and the next one is execute query and the next one is execute update these are these are all interview questions you are supposed to remember what is the purpose and why we are having the statement prepare statement and callable statement and also why we are having execute execute query and execute update method the execute query method is normally used to execute the query with the database and it provides the output output in the sense if you have executed a select query, you will get some kind of output. Here you can see that when I'm executing this query, I'm getting seven or 10 rows. Let us change this one where employee ID equal to 11. When I execute like this, I got only one result and let us change this one and retrieve only one column. So there are different options to retrieve the data and here you can see that within your database itself you are able to retrieve the data from the same table in three different manners so in the same way you you are going to execute the query from java code that means you won't be sure that what kind of data that will be returned from the query execution and the data will be stored the output will be stored in terms of a special class which is result set class i guess this is an interface so the data, whatever the data that it might receive from the query execution, either it will receive more number of rows or it will receive only one row or only one column, that doesn't matter. The data will be stored in an object called result set object and we'll see how to fetch the object from the result set later. So normally the purpose of result set is to store the information which is retrieved from the database. The next one is execute update. Execute update is used for update, insert, and delete queries. So this execute query is used only for select queries, and execute update is used for update, insert, and delete operations. So the return type will be an integer, which specifies how many number of rows got affected 
by executing the query with the database. So the normally when you say insert or delete, when you when you delete any kind of stuff from the table, delete star from employee where employee ID equal to 20 at the time, it will delete only one row. Delete star from employee where employee first name equal to is Steve. It might contain more more than one row. So that means in that case it will retrieve how many number of rows that got deleted from the query execution. So your update, insert or delete. Whenever you want to perform these operations, you are supposed to use execute update case. And if you use select case with respect to execute update, it will throw you an exception specifying that it can use select operation to perform that operation to perform the query. And the next one is execute method. We'll discuss during the execution GTM. The next one is execute method. The execute method, if at all, if you are not sure whether to go for execute query or execute update, then you will go for execute method. So that means this can be useful for, for any kind of query execution. The return type for execute is an integer. Uh, I'm sorry, the return type for execute method is Boolean value. The Boolean value true means this is a select query and the return type, the actual return type of query execution is a result set. Then you can simply call statement dot get result set method which will provide you the actual output if at all if it is if the return value is not true which means the return value is false that means the query execution it won't return any result set That's your intention, Adil. Either you can go for execute query or execute. Java has provided two options for you. And once after that, let us let us think like you are using update, insert, or delete. So that means when you are doing the update, you already know that you are going to update some kind of information and you won't expect anything back for the query execution. So you'll just came to know like uh, how many number of rows got updated within the database. But when you go for select query, when you go for select query, that means you are going to get a result, nothing but number of columns. So when you are executing select store from employee, here you can see that you got 10 rows, along with some different number of columns. The data will be stored in terms of a class or inter a interface called result set object. The result set object consists of several methods which can be used to retrieve the information by each and every row. So at, at, at one point of time, the result set will provide you only one row, one row of information from the database. So that means you are supposed to iterate, iterate through the result set. So first of all, you are at this level. Next, you are able to. This. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, can you go back to that? Uh, this one. The de definition is what? Uh, here. Uh, when you said the true or false if it returns zero records it will be true or false because you said it will be true only it means the select query returns the result set okay so if uh, the if you say select employee ID is equal to 100 if the employee ID is not, yeah. is not there it returns zero rows right okay that time will it be true or false yeah we'll take a look at that okay
Okay. Now we are working on the select query. Let us say the select query has returned a result set. So result set means the data, whatever that was available at this level, you can see the entire data, this entire data, this will be taken like this and this will be specified in our object, result set object. So the result set now contains the whole information. You need to fetch the information one row by row. So the result set has a method rs.next. The rs.next method is used to move the pointer to the next row, just like how we have used the iterator and the has next method will verify whether the next method, sorry, next element was available or not. And if the next element was available, we are going to call the next method. And once after that, you can call once the pointer has moved to the next level, you can retrieve the parameters based on the column names. So you can go and specify rs dot get. So currently you know that employee ID is of type integer and first name is of type string and your salary, if at all if you have specified as floating point, you can retrieve the data in terms of floats as well. So that means while retrieving the data from the column level, you already know what kind of data that will be specified within the column and Java has provided plenty of methods to retrieve the data based on the data type as well as the column name. So here get int of specify the column name within the braces. So rs dot get integer. I know the employee ID is of type an integer and that's the reason I have specified the method as get integer. Similarly, there are several other methods get short or get float or get string. Employee dot first name. This will retrieve the data corresponding to your first name. So normally when you are retrieving the data, you should definitely know what kind of data that you are retrieving and what is the column name? What are all the columns that are available with respect to your table? And also what kind of data, what is the data type corresponding to your column? So those are the three prerequisites and you can get those information to di while discussing with your other teams or your database teams. And Sorry, once you have retrieved uh, the information, I'm sorry, you, yeah. I just wanted to ask a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. Is there any but dynamic way of like, figuring that out? Let's say you're retrieving information, employee ID, employee uh, first name, uh, whatever. Um, is there a way to just use a general get method and then- No, there won't be that? any general get available within our result set. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Once after that, close the result set as well as close your connection. You don't want to hold the connection too long because once our work has finished, it would be better if you have closed the connection. Let us take a look at all the steps in a brief manner and we'll go and write the actual program now. So the first step is our Java will discuss with the driver manager and the driver manager will talk to the database and provides a connection. And from then onwards, our driver manager is responsible to execute any kind of queries or retrieving the result. Internally, the driver implementation, which got loaded into the memory, that class is responsible for performing all these instructions. The steps are, the first step is locate where our database is located, which is nothing but your IP address and port. And also you need the schema, username and password. Those details also required. The next one is load the driver, nothing but whoever is implementing the vendor. Currently, my implementation is MySQL and I'm supposed to load the driver corresponding to MySQL. Next thing, 
we need to ask the driver manager to provide a connection by passing all the information that is required for the driver manager. Once after that, you will ask the connection object to provide a statement. The statement is useful to execute the query and to retrieve the result. The final step is write the SQL statement and call either of the either we have three methods available. You can choose any one of them based on your requirement and you can execute the statement with the database. And the, the last step is retrieve the result and store within the result set and iterate through the result set and retrieve each of the columns. For creating statements, we have three types. The first one is statement, which is used for SQL purpose. And the next one is SQL, nothing but you are select, insert, update, or delete, any kind of stuff. Prepare statement, you can make use of that and pass the input parameters dynamically. And the callable statement, which is used for executing the procedures. And the execution step also, there are three types. The first one is execute. And the next one is execute query. And the last one is execute update. Execute query, which returns a result set, and execute method, it will only return an integer, and based on the, sorry, it will return only a Boolean, and based on the result, either it is true or false, you'll be able to understand, like whether if it is true, you'll get a result set, and if it is not true, you are not going to get a result set object from that. And the last one is execute update. The execute update method, which is mainly used for insert or update or delete operations and it will return you the return value as an inter integer which specifies how many number of rows that got changed within your database and finally the data representation in whatever way that was there within your database it would be returning in the same way to our java object as well so you need to store the data in terms of a result set and the result set you can see that at any point of time, it will point to one row within your result, and you can just move the cursor to the next line, and you can retrieve the data based on the column names. And one more important stuff is your JDBC or your Java.SQL package classes or interfaces, most of them will throw an exception, which is SQL exception. I guess SQL exception is checker exception. So that means you are supposed to write a try catch block whenever you are trying to you make use of the SQL code or SQL classes or interfaces. I'm going to write a class first to fetch the whole data from dot GDBC package. MySQL GDBC connection. If you are not sure about the Java class that needs to be loaded into the memory, go, on, go to your jar file and verify the package. And here you can see that there is a class called driver. So the driver package is available within the package com.mysql.jdbc. That's the one you are supposed to load into the memory. So class dot for name, which accepts a string, which is nothing but your class name, the fully qualified class name. The class dot for name will throw an exception called class not found exception, which is a checked exception. So that means you need to write try cache block. Keep class not found exception, we'll see what kind of exceptions will throw by SQL code. 
the next one is driver manager the next one is driver manager load the driver and the next one is ask the driver manager to provide a connection so in driver manager there is a method called there is a static method called get connection here you can see that i'm trying to use the uh, the last one the last overloaded one prepare java colon my sql colon local host colon 3306 slash java db pass the username as root and the password as root so the driver manager dot connect get connection throws a checker exception which is sql exception okay thanks sql exception so that means you are supposed to handle the sql exception the reason for that is this is a checker exception i don't want to write a separate one so the get connection method returns a connection object and you can see that for connection also there are two interfaces available one is from your com.mysql.jdbc package and the next one is java.sql package you are calling the get connection method on driver manager the driver manager always returns the normal connection object and make sure you are choosing the correct class the next one is call create statement method to execute the query Next, we need to create a statement object. And once after that, you need to write the SQL select star from employee. This is my SQL. Make use of make use of your statement object. And make sure you are using execute query method. We'll discuss about the rest of two methods later. And pass the SQL. So currently, I have created SQL separately. I'll just make use of that SQL object. And once I have executed the execute method, you can see that the return type is a result set. So now we have mentioned that we are supposed to move one by one line within the result and we need to retrieve the data based on the column names. So that's the reason I'm using while loop call a method next which will move the cursor to the next row and it will return if whether if at all if the next row was available it will move the cursor and then it will return a true value if the next row was not available it will simply return the value as false and my while loop will be going to terminate it and once after that retrieve one by one information currently the information the first one is employee id which is an id which is an integer so you can retrieve an integer by using get int here you can see that you have two options the first one is to specify the column label and the next one is column index column label nothing but your actual column name or else you can retrieve the data based on column number as well that means you can simply specify i want to retrieve the data based on one i'm sorry 
so that means it will retrieve the information corresponding to the column number 1 this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 just like that so if at all if you are not sure but you should be knowing what is the data type for that but those that's the reason normally we will prefer to go only based on the column name the next one is employee first name get string of employee first name and the next one is i'm not going to retrieve everything rs dot get string of designation string salary equal to or a start get string of salary so once after retrieving the information just print here employee id So I'm just trying to print each and every row once finally close our result set and also close our connection. So this will fetch all the rows currently whatever that are available with respect to our employee table and once after that we are using the result set to iterate through the data. No suitable driver found. The first one is class not found exception which is related to for name. And the next one is related to SQL exception. You can catch the top level exception class and you can avoid one of them, no issues. Let us change this to normal exception. Did we mean, did we com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver? Java Java colon MySQL colon local host three three zero six Java D. Is this the same which I have specified in the document? Chris? Yeah. Java DB something hot coded in somewhere. Oh. Java DB. Yeah, here I have specified correctly. Oh, probably I have specified something wrong with respect to the URL. No, it is saying no suitable driver found. Yeah, let me check the document. Okay. 
yeah i'm sorry the first one is jdbc jdbc colon mysql colon double slash ip name port java db let us execute now yeah now it has worked yeah my mistake now you can see that you are able to retrieve the data all the information and you are able to move one by one row by using your result set cursor and it was able to print the data properly let us change this where employee id equal to 100 so that means you are only asking the information corresponding to So many of our students have given testimonials on how our training programs are. You will find them on kudzu.com and on our website h2kinfosys.com. On our website h2kinfosys.com, you will also find more detailed information on who we are, the courses that we offer, what each course covers. Also, if you are interested in a demo program, please register on our home page on the left hand side. Just give us more information about yourself and we will send you a link for a demo class. The demo class is absolutely free. Experience our commitment by just attending an orientation workshop at no cost. Our team of faculty and advisors are here to guide you with the right information. If you still have more questions, please feel free to call us. Call us at 770-777-1269. This is a United States number. If you're calling from the UK, call us at 020-337-1269. 17615. You can also email us at training at h2kinfosys.com or h2kinfosys at gmail.com. Thank you for watching our videos. We wish you a great career in information technology.